60 minutes. You were a boy. Yeah. This mother and son are both changing their gender. Okay. I'm just going to ask questions and make suggestions. I am not going to indefinitely state outright that something is wrong or that something is right. Objectivity is the goal, but forgive my cynical nature throughout as this subject matter confounds the senses as far as I'm concerned. What is the difference between this scenario? This 23-year-old woman has dramatically reshaped her face and body. She spent 10 hours under the knife getting 10 different plastic surgery procedures. This is what she looked like before the surgery. Now, look at her on the cover of this week's People magazine. A lot of people are saying, well, she's an addict. She's addicted to fame. <laughs> she's addicted to plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. How do you respond? I'm not addicted. If I were addicted, I would have had 10 plastic surgeries and look you like... You did have 10 plastic well, surgeries. Well, I mean 10 times. I really had two different surgeries. I had one three years ago, and then I had one that I had several procedures done um, weeks ago. If you're addicted to something, you have to do it all the time, not once every couple years, if even. And this scenario. About that age is when I decided that I should have been born blind. I wasn't really happy except when my eyes were closed or it was dark. I felt imprisoned by my sight. I would turn off the lights and sit in my room in the dark. I never did like seeing my reflection. Why not try to heal this mentality through sessions of psychiatry, psychology? Many transgendered individuals suffer from gender dysphoria. I have a feeling that we should kiss. And is that feeling a good feeling or? An incorrect I sometimes have a feeling I can do crystal meth, but then I think, mm, better not. Uh, yeah. These are in-depth, multi-layered scenarios. They are fragile and require a level of logic in addition to respect. I will not be clouded by soft, emotional, leading music playing in the background or feelings. Facts trump feelings. I will value facts over feelings, and I will be very careful to remain delicate on the matter. Yeah? What are you going to name your he-she father-mother? Knock it off! Wow, that thing was on there. How is he, Doc? Is he all right? No, I'm afraid not. <gasps> but she's going to be just fine. Oh, my God! What do you think, boys? 60 Minutes recently aired the story of a genetic boy, Corey who wanted to transition to female, and this trans girl's mother, Erica, now wants to transition to male, Eric. So I'm going to pose certain questions and research that relates to the subject and gets you guys at home to really think on the matter. Corey, take me back to your earliest memories, who you identified as when you were growing up, how you felt inside. Kind of hard to explain it. Body dysmorphic disorder. Tell me what's happened to your back. I have a ruptured disc in my neck. The nerves are like pinching with the spine. And then I'm having severe back problems with my muscles on my right shoulder. And my spine is being pulled forward from the weight of my breast. I've had numbness in my arm as well from pinched nerves because of everything. So my arm has been going numb on and off for like, you know, several months now. The former star of The Hills has had regrets from the very start when the breast enlargement was just one of 10 cosmetic procedures she underwent in one long surgery session. She talked to us back in 2010. I risked everything. I risked my whole life for, for what? Body Integrity Identity Disorder. I wanna, I wanna ask you, do you have any regrets about taking your own vision or the process with which you, you did take your own vision? I don't have any regrets taking my vision. I believe I should have been born blind and I'm happy the way I am. I do have some regrets about <clears throat> the way I did it.
but I'm ha in the end, I'm happy the way I am. Dr. Phil, I, with all due respect to Jewel, but I am having a really hard time, really hard time, sitting so close to someone who traumatized herself, who damaged herself. We took an oath in medicine to help people. We see horrible tragedies every single day as doctors and people <clears throat> who would give anything to go back and restore their vision, their health. Dissociative identity disorder, often referred to as multiple personality disorder. Comorbidity. My name is Walt Heyer. I started out as a transgender child at the age of four. I underwent full gender reassignment surgery at the age of 42. After eight years of living as Laura Jensen, I discovered that it is a psychological issue and not a medical issue, and I've detransitioned back. So I think the idea of helping people with hormones and surgery does far more harm to the individual long term and is not appropriate treatment for people suffering with uh, mental disorders. On the website sexchangeregret.com, which receives over 30,000 hits a year, a one-time transgendered female, Walt Heyer, has cited and researched a lot of evidence and accumulated many stories of high-profile transgendered individuals who do regret their changes. Alexis Arquette, who previously passed, says that gender is bullshit. That putting on a dress doesn't biologically change anything, nor does a sex change. She said that sex reassignment is physically impossible. All you can do is adopt these superficial characteristics, but the biology will never change. Chelsea. I don't know who Chelsea is, but according to this article, seven years ago, Matthew, a male drag queen, became Chelsea. Now Chelsea wants to become Matthew again. In the article published on October 1st, 2014, Chelsea says, I have always wanted to be a woman, but no amount of surgery can give me an actual female body, and I feel like I'm living a lie. It is exhausting, putting on makeup and wearing heels all the time. Even then, I don't feel I look like a proper woman. I suffer from depression and anxiety as a result of the hormones as well. I have realized it would be easier to stop fighting the way I look naturally and accept that I was born a man physically. Britain's youngest sex swap patient shows emotional upheaval. After all the favorable publicity in the US about children needing sex change treatment, it's refreshing to read that it isn't always happily ever after. She, or he, confirms the point I made in my book, Paper Genders. The brain hasn't matured enough to make this decision until the person reaches their mid-twenties. The following is an excerpt from the article. Now, this is obviously Walt Heyer, who is, who is speaking about his book. Although Ms. Cooper underwent a thorough psychological assessment and counseling at Hull Royal Infirmary prior to starting her sex change therapy, she has suffered such torment living as a woman that she has tried to commit suicide twice. She told the Sunday Mirror the hormones have made me feel up and down. One minute I feel moody, and the next minute I feel really happy. The night I tried to slash my wrists, I downed a bottle of Jack Daniels and just thought about how alone I am and how my decision has alienated my family and how I will have to become a boy again just to resolve it. Kleinfelter Syndrome Caroline Cossey is a gorgeous woman who graced our magazine covers predominantly during the 70s, 80s and 90s. She reached the pinnacle of her fame when a tabloid outed her as being born genetically male. Caroline's situation is one of the few that medically, hormonally and chromosomally speaking is a very solid argument in favor of gender reassignment. As a child, Tula always knew she was different from the other kids. But you see, this glamorous, gorgeous female was in fact born a male. She knew right from the beginning nature had made a mistake, and today you'll hear how medical evidence, evidence proved her right. Tell us about the, the testing that was done just in terms of, of chromosomal makeup, though, and what you learned then um, ab about yourself. Yes, during the course of the um, therapy that I had, I had a chromosomal count and, and hormonal, and it was discovered that I was three X's and a Y. Mm. And which means normally women are an X and a Y, right. an X, two, two, women two are two X's. X's and men are an X and a Y, so you had three, three X's, X's and, and a y. Y's. Which is sort of, I think they call it medically mosaic, which is a sort of, you know, there's, I think it's 42 or something. So was this a relief to see this, like, oh my gosh, nature um, did mess up a little bit with me, I, I am In really a way, yes, but I, I knew that I was different, so when you feel that you're different, it sort of confirms the way you feel, but it's not down to sort of like, oh, you know, it's in black and white that I'm mm -hmm. different. I mean, it certainly helped me adjust mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, in, in cases where it's not chromosomal, it's certainly hormonal. This decision must be made with much consideration, soul-searching, and guidance by medical professionals. When the decision, however, is put completely in the hands of a child, this seems like flippancy. People regret their tattoos. Yet parents today seem willing to bow down to the feelings of a child whom society protects from drugs and alcohol. The gorgeous Blair White has some pretty awesome insights into this subject as it is a subject that she has experience in. My feelings about children transitioning, but let me just say, I am against it. 
I am against it. I am against it. I have dealt with so many people trying to convince me that it's a good decision to allow children to go on hormones or puberty blockers and, you know, start their transition really, really early. And I've never been convinced. Being on hormones sterilizes you. A lot of people don't really seem to know that it sterilizes you. I think in part due to all the trashy tabloid headlines like every other week talking about transgender man gets pregnant, but it really does sterilize you. I've been on hormones for about a year and a half and I am completely 100% sterile. I can never procreate. And if there's anyone out there who thinks that a child, a minor, has enough foresight and the capability of deciding for themselves to sterilize themselves for the rest of their life, I don't know, get your head checked. Given all of that information, it still seems irresponsible to allow a 15-year-old girl to continue her transition. Does she know she'll be sterile if she continues on this path, which is ultimately vanity for lack of a better word? Walt Heyer wrote a very good article full of research regarding the trans misdiagnosis. He also raises some very solid points that we do not hear about transgender regret as it does not fit the narrative that the left are trying to perpetuate but we need to escape the political view and stay in keeping with the facts. Walt Heyer's article reads, 62.7% of transgenders have untreated mental disorders. A stinging new report finds that the majority of patients with gender dysphoria had at least one psychiatric access, one comorbidity, the most common being major depressive disorder, 33.7%, specific phobia, 20.5%, and adjustment disorder, 15.7%. Gender dysphoria is a diagnosis of depression, yet being identified as a transsexual or diagnosed with gender dysphoria often stands in the way of getting a proper diagnosis of the comorbid or underlying psychopathologies. Yet gender change pushes in the medical community continue to steer patients toward gender change as the first and only treatment. They don't look for comorbid disorders in the transgender patient. They don't consider that by pushing patients toward gender change, they are preventing them from being diagnosed and treated for another disorder that, according to this study, is likely to be present in two-thirds of patients. For patients undergoing gender change, this can be a quick trip to suicide. For example, for the ones who suffer from major depressive disorder, when they are not diagnosed and treated for the depression, suicide is a highly likely outcome. We have so many reports of so-called comorbid disorders in transsexuals. We need to now ask, do transsexuals have comorbid disorders or do transsexuals have one disorder, mental illness, with just a fabricated co-diagnosis of gender dysphoria? Has the medical profession concocted a new name for old psychiatric disorders? Have they given major depression, dissociative disorder, and so on, a concocted co-diagnosis called transsexualism, transgenderism, GID, Harry Benjamin syndrome, gender dysphoria, or whatever new label fits the social political climate. Could gender dysphoria not actually be a disorder, but just a symptom of a disorder, either of A, mental illness, or B, and an endocrine problem? Just look at the features of the disorder major depression, DSMIV, as used in the article. This disorder is characterized by the presence of the majority of these symptoms. Depressed, mood, a majority of the time, markedly diminished interest, significant weight loss or weight gain, fatigue or loss of energy, feelings of worthlessness or inappropriate guilt. These symptoms of depression sound a lot like those of gender dysphoria because dysphoria is defined as a dissatisfaction with life. Hence, transgenders are a depressed population, which is further evidenced by suicides. In my view, Walt Hayes, the gender change pushes are actively preventing proper care of transgenders and facilitating in their suicides. With the help of hormones, Erica is now Eric. No longer a mother to a son, but a father to a daughter. He is in fact now a father to five daughters. Dear God, okay, I'm trying very hard to be objective, but it's pretty hard and I don't think I can really do it for much longer, but oh, that romantic, beautiful, emotional music in the background. And still happily married to husband of 10 years, Liz. I fell in love with the person, the shell, it's just that. Do you accept, do you feel like you're now married to a man? No. Like I'm married to the same person that I married. I'm just 10 years older. <laughs> and Erica is now Eric. And that's fine.
you. I had sex with her. She's so much happier now, and she's one to definitely keep her feelings in. So to hear, to hear her put them into words is pretty special for me to hear. <laughs> what do you want to do for the sweet sixteen? Um, I want to rent out a like a nice place. It makes me feel complete. I can go out in the public, and they'd be like, "Hey, that's a girl." They don't even know that I'm transgender. Oh. Listen to that beautiful, sweet, leading music in the background. <laughs> yeah, that's not really going to work with me. You can really do it with anything. Check this out. I was a kid. When I was a little boy, I always wanted to be a dinosaur. I wanted to be a Tyrannosaurus Rex more than anything in the world. I always wanted to be a dinosaur. I always wanted to be a dinosaur. You know, they all seem to be caught up in the romance of a fairy tale of it all. And that's a dangerous place to be. What if reality is exceedingly different? Which, according to the stats, it is. Caroline Cossey, Blair White and Christine Jorgensen are successful candidates to this transition and have a good strong head on their shoulders. That does not mean every transition results this way. My hope is that Eric does not regret his transition from female to male and that all his children do not mourn the loss of the mother they once had, and my hope for Corey is that she is absolutely sure and does not come to reject the transition and regret it later. My hope for both of them is that they have been correctly diagnosed before undergoing these life-altering transformations. Best of luck, guys. <laughs>